Hey, everybody, Eric Lay from Guaranteed Rate and joined by the amazing Charlotte Jean, Birch and Cedar Realty. Charlotte, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? Good, good. Amazing, actually. Hey, we've got a good segment planned for everybody today, and we're going to talk about some math. Now, math, again, that sounds a little boring at first, right? <laughs> but we're going to talk about the math that in this housing market, lots of our buyers are encountering. And we're going to talk about the math behind if a buyer wants to make a bid over the asking price to try to win a deal on a real estate transaction. What do you think about that, Charlotte? Well, I mean, we're seeing that all over the place in a lot of price points. Um, I have an example of a client that I'm working with right now. They are looking um, at a price range of between six hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars, and they found one that they put an offer in. It was six forty nine, and they put an offer in that was already above asking, and then they had an escalation clause that went up to six hundred and eighty thousand dollars. So thirty thousand dollars above asking, and it's they still didn't get the offer accepted. And it's just you know it's kind of crazy to everybody that this is the market we're in. We're still seeing over asking, and it can be anywhere from five thousand dollars to you know uh, much Whatever higher. Price. Um, just depending on all the factors. So it's something that's not going to go away anytime soon, just based on the fact that we're still in a low inventory market until that changes. That's where we're at. The buyer demand is still yeah. really high. So that's kind of what we're seeing. And then there's also that fear of how crazy it is that you're paying that much over list price, you know, yeah. but it's, I know we're going to talk about some math, but some other things to keep in mind is you know, if you're planning on being in a house for a while, it's putting in what you feel comfortable putting in, knowing you're going to be there for a while. You're basically yeah. kind of buying into the market ahead of time, knowing yeah. that we're going to see some equity appreciation. So now that we've kind of given a background, please, let's look at the numbers. Um, I love the numbers. <laughs> yeah, I, and I do too. And we've talked about this on previous episodes when we got together, right? This this market is truly a supply-demand imbalance. There is way more buyers relative to the number of sellers we have. And that's what's causing these crazy scenarios. And I guess that's why I wanted to really show the math, because when you see how the math behind where that break even point in the future is, it doesn't sound that crazy. But again, it's hard for us to comprehend those numbers, because right. what we're talking about is compounding appreciation, that equity in your property that you talked about. That's exactly what it is. So Let's get into the math, and I'm going to talk about and show everybody an actual scenario that I have for an actual buyer, not quite at your price points, but the same exact scenario playing out. So just quick video check, Charlotte. Can you see yep. my screen okay? Absolutely. Okay. So this is a live file, a live scenario that I have. I have a buyer in Boise, Idaho, who is wanting to make an offer, an aggressive offer, over the asking price of the seller in an effort to win this contract, okay? So in order to help them evaluate if it makes sense to do this or not, like Charlotte said, it kind of depends on how long you're going to be in the property because you're buying into the market. But it also depends on where we think the market's going to go based on some future estimated appreciation. So as you can see me changing on the screen right here, we did a title search and we know that the seller purchased this particular home for $273,100 in March of 2019. So about a year before the pandemic really made things crazy, okay? Right now, the seller is asking $429,900, okay? Now, based on a historical forecast, that's slightly above where the historical numbers say the market should be. But we know this market is way, way above historical rates of appreciation. So that doesn't surprise me. What our clients are looking to do, similar to the escalation clause that you just talked about, is to put in an offer with an escalation clause to increase their bid by $500 all the way up to $461,000, okay? So I just want to pause here because maybe there are some people that don't really know what an escalation clause is. Yeah, let's talk about that if you want to take that because that's an important sure. thing to understand why we're doing this. Yes. So. so what an escalation clause is, is you're going to tell the seller, I'm going to offer this price. However, I have some room to grow. And if there are other offers that come in that are higher than my initial offer, I'm going to offer $500 in your example over that, that highest bid so that I can beat that bid by $500. So when they say I have an escalation clause, that, that $500 is just an example. It is, you can put whatever you want. 
Um, and it just gives that seller $500 over the next, over that highest offer so that it bumps you and escalates you to the top. Yeah, up to a certain place where they yeah. pre describe this is my ceiling. I'm not going over that, right? Yep. So, exactly. Yep. So, thanks for explaining that to our viewers. And that's exactly what's happening with my buyers. So, we have a $429,900 list price. That's what the sellers are saying the home is for sale. And my clients, you see it did the math there, are going to come in and offer essentially up to $31,100 above that, depending on where that escalation happens. So in their mind, how do we make sure that this makes sense for us, given how long we're going to be in the property? So the other thing I'll share with everybody is they're planning to be in this home for about five years on the low side to seven years on the high side. It's a starter home, three bedrooms, two baths. They're planning on having a growing family. So five to seven years is the window that they gave us. So now you can see what this means, okay? Here's the current asking price. They're offering up to, but not to exceed $461,000. Now what we're gonna show them is, based on a historical average of 4.03% and what we're currently forecasting the next five years to be, using historical trends, we're expecting about 3.5% appreciation every year for five years. Now, Charlotte, you and I know that right now that is well beyond or well below what we're experiencing, right? Yeah. yeah. Who knows how long the market will continue to appreciate in the double digit rates that it is right now. Time will tell and we'll get there and we'll look back and we'll know, right? But we don't have that crystal ball that we talked about before. But if we use historical numbers, which are well below what we're currently seeing, you can see that there is a break even that's going to happen in less than three years. In fact, it's that point right there where the appreciation trend line breaks even with this horizontal line, which is the price they bid above asking, right? Mm -hmm. So based on their timeline in the property, and again, they're expecting to be in the property for five years on the low side to seven years on the high side, they're going to be fine because that price point that they're bidding over the ask is going to break even with the appreciation of the home in just under three years. Now, again, we don't know what's going to happen. The future doesn't always show up in the crystal ball, but I feel really confident sharing this with my buyers because this is well below what the current market's rate of appreciation yeah. is right now. So I would even call this a absolute worst case scenario based <laughs> on what we're seeing right now. What are your thoughts on all that numbers? I've been talking a long time. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, it's really enlightening um, to show that to clients to know, you know, it depends on how long you're planning on staying there. If you're a flipper, nope, probably not going to make a lot of sense to do any of that. But if you're somebody who's looking to be there for, you know, three to five, like the average, I think is eight years now for that sellers remain in their home, Yeah. Um, which right now we are seeing like anywhere between 18 to 22% appreciation year over year and a standard appreciation is like 3 to 6% year over year. Right. So even that is pretty low for a uh, standard appreciation. So yeah. I mean I think it's just telling that you know this is we were talking a little bit earlier when we were going over this as an example it, that this doesn't take into account that you might have a little extra funds that you're bringing in because there was no appraisal gap or whatever, yep. but still it's very telling. Yeah. It's, it's not as scary when people look at their break. Not as scary. Yeah. And, and the other thing I really want to emphasize for everybody, this isn't even taking into account your amortization gain. And so when you own a house and you have a mortgage, there's a portion of your payment that goes back to paying your principal balance down. Now, certainly the large amount of it goes to interest on the loan, but there is some that goes to principal. So every single month that you make a payment, your principal balance goes down just a little bit. And that is additional equity in the property that this thing's not even going to show you. So there are a lot of good things that are going to come out of this situation. But as you and I said earlier, the key, the real key is really having a good idea about how long you will own and occupy this property, because then we can judge where that break even is going to be. And if it happens yeah. before you're going to sell that property, feel good about it, right? Because yeah. the appreciation rates are real. When you talk about that 4% year over year on top of an already, you know, $460,000 purchase price, potentially, that's a lot of equity and appreciation that you're going yeah. to expect. So yep. I agree.
Yeah. Very well, we example. hope this we hope this helps a little bit because again, this is a concept that Charlotte and my buyers are really grappling with right now. And it really takes an illustration like this from a real estate professional to start to see what this means if you get in this situation, because this market is a little bit competitive to say the <laughs> least. And if you do want to win an offer, it could it could mean that you have to put in a bid over the seller's asking price to do that. So we hope this was enlightening. We hope the math was enlightening there because again, seeing the numbers is a little bit easier than just trying to process in your brain and trying to put this all together and rationalize what seems like a pretty scary proposition. So yeah, great job. Okay, well, thanks topic. for that. And again, as always, we appreciate all of you taking some time out of your day to watch our Let's Get Real About Real Estate segment. We're going to go ahead and post like we do always our contact information. It'll be in the comments down below on the Facebook post. So if you have any questions for Charlotte on the real estate side, or if you have any questions for me on the mortgage and the number side, please reach out to us at any time. We're always here to help you and anybody that you know that needs our help. So until next time, Charlotte, thanks again. Always good Thank to see you, you and talk. We'll look forward to doing this again soon. All right. Bye. Bye.